By far, labeling is where many fall short. Let's dive right in with the top 5 labeling, marking, and IFU mistakes that count as certification failures. Number 5. Placement of symbols and markings outside and inside the device should follow as per relevant standards and regulations. While marketing may be tempted to minimize the prominence of crucial information, adhering to clear visual hierarchy for these elements is paramount. Electrical ratings, for instance, should be readily visible near the mains inlet connection. Other key external ports, such as water supply, signal inputs and outputs, should be adjacently identified with the intended connections. Number 4. The use of symbols on medical devices is crucial for safe use, as they ensure accurate and clear communication of information. However, issues with aspect ratio, contrast, or legibility from the user's normal position can compromise the intended message, potentially leading to confusion, improper device use or servicing, and ultimately lead to harm. Therefore, careful attention must be paid to every aspect of symbol design. This includes factors like line thickness, size, and use of required colors, as well as ensuring optimal visibility under varying lighting conditions and for users or service personnel with potential limitations. A common mistake is to reduce the symbol size to fit in limited spaces without maintaining the proper aspect ratio. This can render the symbol unrecognizable and ultimately defeat its purpose. Number 3. Missing Symbols this typically occurs when a manufacturer does not have a labeling requirement specifications for their device. The goal is to capture all required symbols, markings, and labeling across applicable standards from the start. In addition to regulatory requirements, the IEC 60601 series of standards also specify symbols and markings. Creating separate specifications for labeling requirements and instructions for use, or IFU, is crucial for clarity and ensures everyone knows what information needs to be included. First, classify the device according to Clause 6 of IEC 60601-1 and any relevant collateral and particular standards. This establishes key details like applied parts, type B, BF or CF, IP rating, class level 2, and power source. Annex C of IEC 60601-1 standard provides guidance on markings located both inside and outside the device, on controls and instruments, and for accompanying documents like the IFU. Remember, internal markings are generally for service or installation personnel, except for user-replaceable batteries or fuses located in user access areas. For clear communication, let's define some terms. Within this standard, markings encompass both symbols and text used to convey information on the device. And the document called the IFU is referred to as accompanying documents, which can be user instructions, service instructions, or a combined document depending on the device's complexity. Markings aren't limited to just physical labels. Depending on your device's size and materials, silk screening, engraving, laser marking, or embossing are all viable options. It's essential to pinpoint where all labeling and marking requirements are located across applicable standards, regulations, laws, and directives. This meticulous research ensures your device complies with all relevant requirements. Finally, using global symbols is highly recommended. This reduces translation needs. Common standards for symbols include IEC 60878, IEC 60417, ISO 7000, ISO 7010, and ISO 15223-1. Remember, for specific device types, additional critical standards may apply, like IEC 60601-1-11 for home healthcare devices, and IEC 60160101-1-2 for electromagnetic compatibility, or EMC. These may have additional labeling and marking requirements. The instructions for use is a critical component that often gets overlooked. It's a place where many stumble, failing to convey crucial information about symbols and markings found on the device. The IFU should not just regurgitate these symbols and markings, but also provide detailed explanations for each, making them easily understandable. At the forefront of the IFU ought to be all warnings, cautions, precautions, indications for use, and contraindications. This is a way to ensure that users are completely alert to any potential risks before they commence operation of the device. The ultimate goal of the IFU is not just to inform, but to ensure users can safely use the device. To achieve this goal, the IFU must be clear, comprehensive, and easy to comprehend. For a more detailed guide on crafting an effective IFU, Clause 6 of IEC 6601-1 comes in handy. Remember, 
a well-crafted IFU can make a significant difference in user safety, so don't overlook it. Understanding the significance of marking label durability is crucial for device manufacturers. A key aspect typically overlooked is the quality of the labeling material used which directly impacts the longevity and legibility of the markings. The consequences of making such a common error can lead to the failure of the label to adhere to the device properly or even peel off, and ultimately, a failed marking label durability test. Let's illustrate this with a real-world example. Imagine that you've just received a non-compliance letter notifying you that your test label didn't pass the nameplate rating label material durability test. This essentially implies that the material used for the label had curled up at the corners or peeled off from the device. Now, from a manufacturer's standpoint, the initial reaction would be to correct these failures. The most likely steps would include identifying the root cause, which is likely to be the use of an incorrect label material that's not suitable for the intended surface or environmental conditions. Following this, finding a reputable supplier that complies with your requirements and procuring samples of a new label material would be the logical next steps. Subsequently, you would then conduct a pre-compliance durability test per the standard. If the new label passes the test, the next phase would involve updating relevant documents like bombs and drawings. However, if the new material doesn't make the cut, you would need to repeat the process until you find the right fit. Following a successful test, the supplier management list of critical suppliers would be updated. The new label would then be affixed onto the device and resubmitted for retesting by the lab. After this, all that remains is to wait for the results. Failure to pass any retesting would mean revisiting the steps. However, this entire scenario can be avoided by developing separate labeling and IFU requirements specifications. By investing a small amount of time, you increase your chances of success at the first attempt, thereby bypassing future complications. Consequently, these failures significantly impact IEC 60601 certification. Thanks to DocuReg's co-contributor Leo Eisner that we've been able to bring you this insight. Stay tuned for part 3 of this series where we'll delve into other certifications failures. Until next time,